Okay, so the this section, we're going to extend the ideas of our angles and triangles into um, other shapes and perimeter circumference and area. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about are the different shapes. So gen generally, they're called polygons. And polygons are just straight edges connected by a vertex and have angles in between. And that's really what it is. So polygons could have eight sides, right? And notice two lines connect them, and then there's angles in between. So that's what polygons are. They're two-dimensional, and um, and the edges are straight. And so we're going to talk about quadrilaterals um, as our polygons. Our quadrilaterals are quad, which means four, so four-sided polygons. And similarly, the sum of their angles of a quadrilateral add up, like triangles add up to 180, quadrilaterals add up to 360. And so the reason why is because if we look at these shapes of the quadrilaterals, which are four-sided, we could see almost that a quadrilateral is made up of two triangles. And if one triangle angles add up to be 180, and I have two of them, double 180 is 360. And that's where that 360 comes from. See? So you could see like all, how quadrilaterals are made up of two triangles. OK, so the first one is a parallelogram. And the parallelogram says that two parallel sides have equal lengths. So essentially, opposite sides have a, a equal lengths. Opposite angles have equal lengths. Um, a rectangle, um, I, this similarly to the parallelogram, except the only difference are the angles. All the angles are 90 degrees. But other than that, opposite um, sides are equivalent. But all the interior angles are 90 degrees. That's the only difference. A square is um, fun because similarly to a rectangle, all the interior angles are 90 degrees, but then all the sides are equal. Okay, and then a rhombus says that um, they're kind of a mix, right? Opposite angles are equal, and all sides have equal length. So I say a rhombus is like a square pushed over to its side. It's like I push the square over because all of them have, all the sides are still equal, but then the interior angles become a little different. The opposite angles are equal. A rectangle and a parallelogram, same thing. Like I feel like I have this straight rectangle and I push it to its side and it becomes a parallelogram. So now not all the angles are 90 degrees, but the opposite angles are equal. That's how I think of the quadrilaterals. So here, if I find the missing angles of a quadrilateral, I do know that opposite angles are equivalent. So here, this means that this has to be 60 degrees because this is opposite of 60. But um, that means that these opposites also have to be equal. So if this one is called, let's call it x, then this one opposite from it also has to be x. And what is the sum of all the angles? Well, again, twice a triangle, right, 360. So this would mean that 360 degrees is equal to 60 plus 60 plus the x and then its opposite x. So then I get 360 um, equal to 120 degrees plus 2x. And then I could, you know, do all of this how I usually solve for stuff, but I'm going to rewrite it as like 2x equal to 240. And that way I can see x is equal to 120. And if you have to use a calculator, go ahead. But again, I want to use the most minimal amount of algebra because we're not in an algebra class. Um, I wouldn't leave it as x. x was just a placeholder that I put there, so I'm just going to rewrite it as the missing angles are... Um, 60 degrees and 120 degrees.
Okay, so those properties of quadrilaterals are really great. Um, and the other piece is the perimeter and area. So now we know something about the interior, the angles, we can use this to our advantage and talk, now talk about the sides. And with the sides comes perimeter and area. And again, we're going to do perimeter and area for um, some quadrilaterals, and then we like to include a triangle. But recall that because um, a parallelogram, rectangle, and square are two triangles, the triangle itself will just be half of whatever the quadrilaterals are. So a parallelogram, the perimeter of any shape is just the sum of the sides, right? You just add up all the sides up. The area is base times height. In a rectangle, it's the same thing. It's just the sum of the sides, but since opposite sides are equal, then you have two of these sides plus two of these sides. And the area is still the same, base times height. The perimeter of a square is the same thing. You just add up all the sides. Since all sides are equal, there's four of them. And then the sides are equal, so it's s times s, which is s squared. But essentially, it's still base times height. The perimeter of any shape is just the sum of the sides. And the area of a quadrilateral is always base times height. It's just their attributes that make them either more a simple formula than the other. And a triangle is the same thing, right? Perimeter, sum of the sides. And then because an area of a rectangle, let's say, is base times height or a quadrilateral, and since a triangle is a half of a quadrilateral, then it's half of the base times height. So it logically falls into place. Okay, let's try some applications. Um, the first thing we want to note is when we start doing area, we need to do area as square units. And I'll show why. And perimeter is just the sum of the sides, so you're not multiplying anything. And so it's just going to keep its original units. It's only when we multiply units, we get the area to be square units. And then eventually we'll do volume, which will be um, cubic units. OK, so let's take a look at this parallelogram. The perimeter is just the sum of the sides. So once again, opposite sides are equal in a parallelogram. So this means this side is 2.3 centimeters, and this side up here is 4 centimeters. So when I do the perimeter, I'm just summing the sides up as 2.3 centimeters plus 4 centimeters plus 2.3 centimeters plus 4 centimeters. And of course, you can always multiply by 2 by one of the dimensions. It's really up to you. So if you just go to the calculator and just add up all these, really simple. I don't want to do anything complicated here. So 12.6. So notice in this case, I'm just adding up like terms. It's like 2x plus 3x is 5x. You know, it's just adding up terms and the centimeters stay centimeters. When I do area and it's base times height, so here's the base and here's the height. Notice here if I put the full amount, I put 4 centimeters times 2 centimeters. I do see 4 times 2, which is 8, but you also get centimeters times centimeters. It's like x times x, right, which is x squared. So centimeters times centimeters is going to be square centimeters. So you either can write it out as centimeters like superscript square or put square centimeters. It's really up to you, but I like this notation as long as you write the superscript as a 2. All right, not too bad, right? See, we use the properties of the sides and then use the formulas. So if we get a shape like below, where it looks a little like a weird elf shoe or something like that, we can find the perimeter and the area by just adding. The perimeter is easy because we just add up all the sides. The only issue here is we have a side missing. So let's find the missing side first. I do know that um, this is 6 yards and that this piece here, so let me highlight this. So I have this here and then this long piece. So if I can find this length here, 
that's not a part of the shape, by the way. <laughs> but if I can find this, then the blue is going to be 6 minus whatever that green part is, that green length. So let's find that green length. Well, it looks like I did something nice here. I put like this dot dash line and I put it dash because it's not originally part of the shape. I put it there, right, as a placeholder. So now I can see that I have a hypotenuse of eight, a uh, part of the length here and then the height. And I can see I just made a right angle. And so what I have here is a right triangle. The only problem I have is that this piece here is 11 yards. It's not that little green piece that I need. But I do know that this piece here is four yards, which would leave this base of this triangle as 11 minus four, which is seven yards because seven plus four is 11. And if this whole thing is 11 and this piece is four, then I know that this base of this triangle is seven yards. So I'm very close, right? So now let's go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem. I do know that I have two legs and hypotenuse, a right angle. I can use Pythagorean theorem to find the missing angle. So let's call this um, B. And then I get um, 7 squared plus B squared equal to that hypotenuse of 8 squared. And then I get 49 plus B squared equals 64. And then I could subtract 49 from 64 and get 15. Now, I wouldn't take the square root. I would just leave it as b is equal to the square root of 15. And then I'll round later on in life. So if b, now this piece here is the square root of 15. OK, so I have that length. And that means that blue length is 6 minus the square root of 15. Now, I could go ahead now and put that in the calculator and put second and then the square root, 15, and I'll get 2.1 as yards. Everything's in yards. Okay, and I think that's good enough, right? One decimal place out. Okay, so now I have this length which is 2.1 yards, and now I can go ahead and find perimeter. So notice all that preliminary work to find just that little missing piece. It's going to be a little bit more work than the actual problem itself, right? So let's go ahead now and just find perimeter. So the first thing we needed to do here was find the missing side. And then the second part here is now we can find the perimeter. So the perimeter will just be the sum of the sides. And so this is just going to be like starting at six yards and adding around clockwise. So yard, six yards plus four yards plus 2.1 yard plus eight yards um, plus 11, right, the whole base. And if I add these all up, I can do 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 2.1 is 12.1. 12 point 1 plus 8 is 20.1. 20 and 20.1 20 plus 11 is 31.1. But when in doubt, come to your calculator and just go ahead and double check. and 31.1, perfect. Make sure to put units, keep it the same. OK, 
Okay, the third part is finding the area. Now the area is gonna be a little tricky because we don't have area for like a elf shaped shoe, right? And so we'll cut this up into um, this trying uh, rectangle here. So here's the base and height and then a right triangle here. Now we'll have to use the base as a, a seven, but the height as the square root of 15. Now the, it's okay because we're finding area, meaning we're like painting this wall, right? That's area. So it doesn't really matter. Only perimeter matters whether you're gonna add in the side or not. But area doesn't matter because you're just finding the border, the boundaries where you're gonna paint this triangular wall, right? So we still can use this height here to find that area. So essentially the area will be equal to the area of this long rectangle plus the area of this right triangle. So the area of a rectangle or any quadrilateral is base times height. So this will be the six yards times the four yards. Plus, a triangle is half a quadrilateral, so one half of the base times height. The base of the rec of the triangle is seven yards times the height, which is the square root of 15 yards. And I'm just leaving it exact, but you know me, I'm gonna round in the end anyways, right? So the first part is 24 yards squared, right? Yard times yard is square yards, plus, and I'm going to go ahead and just put this 1 half 7 and square root 15 in the calculator. So I'll go ahead and put 1 half and then put parentheses times 7 and then times square root of 15. So I'm just putting it like how I see it on my paper and then I'll round. And so if I round to the first decimal, it'll be five, so 13.6, and then square yards. Now, I have the square yards for area, but notice I'm adding. So now if it's like if I add x squared plus x squared, this isn't x to the fourth, right? It would be x squared plus x squared is two of the like terms. So I'm okay now adding them together will keep it square yards. So let me go ahead and add now 24 to 13.6 and get 37.6. And then square yards. It's only when we're multiplying where we're going to change that um, the units from squared or cubic. But other than that, if you're adding units together, that is only like terms, so you keep the original units. It's only when we're multiplying the units where we get the higher powers, but if we add something with the same power, they're like terms.